Big Daddy Dalio has spoken. Check it out. He just released a new article on LinkedIn, which we are going to go over in this video. It's called Populism Plus the Weakening Economy Plus Limited Central Bank Power to Ease Plus Elections Equals Risky Markets and Risky Economies. Now, I love reading stuff from Dalio, but at the same time, I kind of don't like it at all because it's always somewhat sort of extremely depressing. And you know, I do love living in ignorance because ignorance is bliss. It's walking around, whistling, chewing bubble gum, whatever, whatever ignorant people do. But I guess if you're in the markets and investing, you got to get real. And Dalio, big daddy Dalio, he does a great job of bringing me back down to earth where things aren't as great as wherever I am. But let's just jump into it. So first off, Dalio starts explaining the problems that we're facing. The wealth opportunity gap is increasingly becoming manifest in increased populism of both the left and the right, which is leading to greater conflict both within and between countries and more extreme and worse decision making, which is especially risky when economic growth is weakening, the central banks have limited capacity to ease, important elections are approaching, and big geopolitical tensions arising from China emerging as a power that is challenging the US as the existing leading world power are intensifying. Over the next two to three years, this confluence of forces will come to a head and have big influences on markets, economies, societies, and world affairs, much as they did in the late 1930s. So Dalio basically listed all the forces coming together in a perfect storm, which if you remember, in the 30s, that's when World War II was, right? So it's really not good. Now, one of the biggest issues that's been happening that I've been trying to understand myself is populism and wealth disparity. So Dalio explains how one of his economic political principles is if there is a big gap in the economic conditions of people who share a budget and there is an economic downturn, there's a high chance of bad conflict. If there isn't a big gap, most people are poor or most people are rich, then there's much less risk of a conflict. Disparity in wealth, especially when accompanied by disparity in values, leads to increasing conflict. Conflict. And in the government, that manifests itself in the form of populism of the left and populism of the right. So this is the big issue that we're facing in the U.S. There is a huge wealth disparity right now. Now, if you think about it, compared to 50 years ago, every single person is much better off than they used to be. But that's not how people look at their own wealth. The way people measure their own wealth is not based off their ancestors, based off their neighbors. So if I only got a 40-inch TV and then my buddy has a 100-inch TV, I'm going to be jealous and I'm not going to be happy. Like literally, my happiness is affected by that other person and what they have, which is not a good thing. And you know, that's not where happiness should come from. You should be self-sufficient, self-love, blah, blah, blah. But we're not all monks. The reality is, is that people aren't happy if other people have way more money than them. And I mean, the TV is just a stupid example. It also has to do with serious things like healthcare and all that. So when you have this disparity and a difference in values, that's when you start seeing populism in the government. The politicians start catering to each side. So Dalio explains that the populists on the right are capitalists and the populists on the left are socialists. So he says the populace of the right, the capitalists, they don't know how to divide the pie well, while the populace of the left who are socialists, they don't know how to grow the pie. You know, obviously capitalists know business. They know how to create jobs, create wealth, all that good stuff. But there's a lot of people that get left behind. So in that sense, they don't know how to divide the pie well. Socialists, on the other hand, they know how to divide the pie a little better, which is debatable, I guess. I'm biased, but they don't know how to grow the pie. They're not the businessmen. They're not good capital allocators. Now, I do agree that capitalism in its full form is not not the best solution. And also, I definitely agree that full socialism isn't the solution either. So Dalio says, while one would hope that when such polarity exists, leaders would reform the system both to divide the pie and make it grow better, which Dalio says is absolutely doable and certainly the best path. Unfortunately, leaders who know how to bring people together behind policies that both grow and divide the pie well are both rare and unappreciated. So the problem of the gap in wealth and opportunity is unlikely to be resolved well and peacefully. And this is a serious issue. If there's too much wealth disparity, you get a revolt. People making money get thrown under the bus because it's not fair enough for everybody. So Dalio with his amazing research team at Bridgewater, they did a study on populism and they found that populist leaders typically follow a pretty standard path of steadily increasing conflict both within and between countries, which is pretty much what we're seeing all over the world, right? Populist strongman leaders everywhere. And they're all in a way promoting nationalism while cutting off ties with other countries, but at the same time kind of fueling the fires within their own country too. So according to Dalio, the wealth gap issue will probably be the biggest issue of this next election. And we've seen examples of this, like Alexandria Cortez, 
She's calling for the 70% marginal tax rate on incomes over 10 million. I'm sure you've heard about that. And when they poll, a majority of Americans are in favor of it. And then Elizabeth Warren, she's talking about the wealth tax of 2% on assets over 50 million and 3% on fortunes over 1 billion. So are these the best policies for the economy? Probably not. But what these policies do is appeal to the populist side of these people because we're on such far ends now. Just go watch that interview of Alexandria Cortez on Colbert and just look at the comments down below the video. People are all for taxes like this. They're like, oh good, so that rich dude doesn't get his 10th mansion, who cares? Which I mean, yeah, I get it if you don't have the same opportunities, but it's probably not the best policy for the economy. And what's funny is that a lot of venture capitalists that are usually very left-leaning, they're coming out and saying that they don't support these populist policies. And they're a little disappointed that both sides are playing that game now because with taxes and stuff like this you aren't appealing to some logic you're more appealing to emotions like yeah get the rich people so the, and the vcs who are usually left-leaning are yeah they're the rich people they got to cover their asses a little bit so he says we haven't seen the markets react to such news because it's way too early to handicap the odds of who will be in control and what they'll do makes sense he says the same thing is going on in europe as the internal and external populist conflicts are intensifying at the same time as europe is being economically held together by a thin thread of central bank and single currency which is facing increased stress from some seemingly irreconcilable differences. Now I remember in college taking a whole course about the Eurozone, and the first thing the professor said, first day of class, first thing, he said the Eurozone was built to fail. And then we spent a whole semester with all these papers and tests figuring out why that's true. A lot of work. But yeah, as every economist knows, the way the Eurozone was put together didn't make sense. You can't have a single currency binding together extremely different countries with very different economies. So the Eurozone is nothing like the United States. The United States, there's way more similarities between the states and there are differences. In Europe, where there are literally different countries, different languages, and everything, that just doesn't work trying to put them together. But going back to the wealth disparity in the US, I was talking to Alex from MacroOps about this recently, along with Chris, who's also one of our new MacroOps members. And we were talking about maybe one of the best ways to help with the wealth disparity is to increase the capital gains tax, because there is a very small portion of Americans actually involved in the stock market. And that's really where the disparity comes from, especially when you have central banks that pushed up markets markets for so many years, the people that are involved in markets are going to be way above than the people who aren't. Now, of course, as traders and investors, we do not want that capital gains tax going up, but it's a solution that makes a lot more sense than the 70% marginal tax rate or the 3% wealth tax. But I don't know. These are tough things to figure out. I want to know what you guys think. You know, we never talk politics on this channel, so let it rip in the comments. Get out whatever you're feeling. I know you guys got some pent up thoughts about this. Let's discuss it. Now, keep it civil, of course, because the most important thing is is to understand the realities like Dalio just laid out right here and then try to find a solution that works for everyone. But okay, comment down below and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for notifications for when new videos are released. Published about three a week, all business and market related. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay foul out there. Bye.